So, so Don, so you know, thanks for doing this again. And Don, so I'm talking to Don Schner, uh, Rise franchisee, first location open in Orlando, developing seven units overall. But I want to talk to you, Don, specifically for because you come from a, such a different background. You and, 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 and obviously, we're gonna, I want you to go into it. But you took over a family business, grew it, sold it, and then got into food. Why would you want to do it? It's hard. You have no experience and family piece to it, but I'll let you sort of go with your background. Yeah, so let's, th this all will kind of roll together when we, uh, when we describe it. Um, I was in a family business, got out of college, Creighton University, Big East basketball, and uh, we uh, uh, got into a family business, paint and coatings for, uh, for boats. Okay, we were industrial coatings and paint and so forth. But um, our big play was in the marine industry. And I did that for 30 years. Uh, my brother was in operations. I was in sales and marketing, ran this company, grew it 100x over 30 years, sold it to private equity 2015. And uh, I'm consolidating a lot of information. Basically, what we did is... Uh, just like good old uh, hustle and um, salesmanship, marketing, B2B sales. We sold to marinas and boat builders and distributors and so forth. But our products were for anti-fouling paints for boats and topside urethanes and so forth. And uh, in 30 year run, great run, and uh, we sold the company. So here I am in 2015, we, I did consulting, which is code uh, for anyone who understands this is code for not working. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so uh, did that until uh, COVID. OK, COVID hit and um, the private equity firm, we, we rolled up about 15 companies. Um, all the directors uh, got let go. Who knew what was happening in COVID at that point? That's OK. I was on my boat. I had an absolute 60 fly bridge. I'm out in the water and uh, and uh, not too much on golf, more on boating. Obviously, my background and um, like most entrepreneurs, unlike my friends who are golfing every day and boating and all that, every day after the first year, which was really, really fun, it got a little bit more boring for me. And I realized that I wanted to get involved in something. So my son-in-law, who is, and this is your, how I kind of transitioned in the rise. So my son-in-law, who was in HVAC industry, great business in Florida, a lot of hours, a lot of money, but it's tough. It's a tough job. Um, he didn't really love it, okay? So I said to him after uh, two years of um, uh, being on my boat and traveling and so forth that I w was a little itchy to get into a, like a semi-retired type uh, of a job. So I looked on the internet, started bouncing around different uh, blogs, websites, franchise uh, documents, and so forth. And I came across this um, this uh, website called Rise, Southern Biscuit and Chicken. And trust me, that was the last thing I wanted to do was get in the restaurant industry. And I hear notorious things about it, late hours, night, weekends, you're at the mercy of the, uh, of the, uh, the gourmet chef. And uh, alcohol and high high uh, ROI and uh, just a lot of just a lot of things that aren't real conducive to owning a business. So I look at this thing and I see um, that it's Southern Biscuit, which I thought that was really cool. The Southern Biscuit. Then I saw this quick service casual model, which I went through the videos and love the uh, the interactiveness with technology and the hot boxes and. Uh, and um, and so forth. Then I looked at the hours, seven to two, and I'm like, okay, now I'm interested. Filled out the form uh, from Fransmart and um, went online, and uh, they gave us a discovery day. Went to Raleigh, and this is important. Um, when you go when you go to a, a discovery day, you're looking at uh, everything. You're looking at um, the restaurant, you're looking at the owners, the founders, you're looking at the systems, you're looking at the customer base. And uh, I went to five restaurants and the, the customers are bouncing off the wall. The employees are happy. The systems are simple, okay? Um, the um, the uh, inside was futuristic with the hot box and the iPad when yeah. you press yeah. to place the orders. You have orange floors and you have all this... Uh, biscuit uh, wallpaper and so forth. So I'm like, okay, this is great. So I went from uh, restaurant to restaurant and um, 
at that point, we sat down, we ate the food. The food was absolutely amazing. Um, all the different boxes, all the different sides, all the different Southern biscuit sandwiches, blueberry biscuits and, uh, and donuts and so forth. And, uh, and the vegetarian menu. And at that point, I was like, okay, I'm interested. So um, I, w- I met with Brian and I met with Ken and I met with uh, um, Tom, Tom Ferguson, who passed away, unfortunately. But um, at that point, they said, so is this something you want to do? And I said, I'll uh, let you know in 30 days. So I wanted <laughs> to make that I wanted to make that decision really with my head. You know, when you get emotional about things and uh, day 31, they uh, they called me up and they said, is this something you want to do? And I said, let's do it. Let's do it. And uh, so I opened up um, the first restaurant in uh, Winter Park, Florida, if anybody's listening to this great, uh, great town, uh, uh, foodie town. Um, you know, upscale and so forth. We opened up the first day lines down the block in the dark. It was just amazing. And I, and I said to people, I said, why, uh, why are you here? And they uh, basically said they went to the Savannah store or they went to the Raleigh store or they went to the Nashville store and they saw all the media and, uh, and they saw the menu and they couldn't wait. Uh, the buzz was out there. They couldn't wait to, to try the food. Long story short is we've been open about nine months now, and uh, we're probably the fourth uh, fastest, uh, fourth grossing store in the chain right now, and which is amazing to just even say that out loud. Yeah. And we we are such proponents of this uh, business model that um, we signed a second lease in downtown Orlando. It's uh, almost complete. It's going to open uh, in July. And I just signed a third lease in a veto right near the University of Central Florida. And uh, that'll be open in December. So I'm a big proponent of the Rise business model. And um, usually when I get excited about something, I, uh, I go full bore. And that's where I am. That's where I am right now. Uh, so fast forward, Don. You, you, you mentioned, hey, you got second location opening soon, signed the third lease. What's what's the been the, like the day to day for you right now? I know I know you're not you're not making biscuits every day, but but you had to hire people. Your son in law. What's that experience been? The Rise team helping out. What's going from boats to biscuits? What's that been like? Boats to biscuits. I like that. That's a good headline for uh, for uh, the future. Yeah. Um, it's to me, it's been a really easy transition. And what I mean by that is Rise has really good systems in place. Okay. And any entrepreneur will tell you that the simpler the business model, the more you can scale it. And I really feel um, like with the training that we received and the uh, and the uh, the simplicity of the menu, the simplicity of the equipment, it was easy to really uh, take it uh, from day one. Now, now, um, don't be naive. I I know so much more in nine months than I did the first day. Um, the first day, we uh, we obviously uh, a month before we interviewed. We interviewed a lot of people. We hired fourteen people, knowing that we didn't need them all, and um, and we trained them. And um, what I've learned about people in this industry is they make or break your organization because it's a people business. It's we're re- really interacting with the customer at at the level for us. It's food for breakfast and for lunch and so forth. So. People want to be greeted. They want to be acknowledged. They want to uh, have a good experience. So that's important. And we constantly, uh, we constantly are preaching uh, customer service, even though they come for the food, they stay for the experience, of course. So um, that's important. Um, um, a couple, one other thing that's on my mind here about um, about this process is every entrepreneur who's interested in this. You should really ask yourself why, okay? Why is much more important than what, okay? What is the systems? What is the restaurant? What is the um, is the people and the food? But the why is why do you want to do this? Why do you want rise? Why do you want to open up in your in your city or town? You got to answer that why question because the why is going to drive you when you have a bad day or uh, somebody quits on you or somebody uh, gives you a complaint at the restaurant and so forth. You gotta, you gotta realize that the the why is the uh, the shining star, and that's what's gonna keep you going every day. And you have a reason to get up in the morning. The why is important. Okay, so important. Um, if you want to say um, 
the Z, let's say A to Z, let's use a metaphor. A is the uh, the Y and Z is the vision, okay? Where do you see yourself 5, 10, 20 years from now? That's the vision. And where are you going? Is this aligning with your personal values and your vision? That's the Z. Last thing is the B to the Y, okay? B to the Y. The B to the Y to me is the day-to-day things. And I don't look at uh, like, oh, if we have a new menu, we're going to be successful. Or if we uh, put on a different radio station or create a new website or have a business card or or, whatever, or clean a little better. Everything's important. And I look at it as everything is 1%. If we have 1% greet people better or 1% clean the tables better, 1% uh, have a nice rally and a nice talk before we open in the morning, they're all 1%. Well, they all add up. Okay, one percent every day over time equals success. So it's very important that you don't real you don't get caught up in what's the magic. The magic is one percent a day every day. Just keep improving. The A of the Y and the Z of the vision, though, that's the most important. That's that's good advice too, because I know I've been I've been I was in food before you know be it with France Mart for most of my life, and and you can. You can go in any restaurant, any any food establishment, and pick it apart, right? Notice something on the ground, something in the bathroom, this that. Host wasn't super nice. Food took seventeen minutes, not fifteen minutes, whatever it may be. But if you're able to to focus on those little things and just and you look back three days and go, we won some battles, we're improving. You know, you mentioned the why and the vision. What was your why? And then after that, I'd like to know what's your. I know you got three locations coming soon, but what's what's the vision after that? My why was I wanted to get and be into a a job that I didn't need to be there day to day as an owner. Okay. And I'm not, even though I have cameras and I have Revel systems, which is the, I can see sales up to date and I can see orders for us foods and all that. Um, my, my day to day is by my managers, my assistant managers and so forth. But I go in once a week, every week, because you can only get so much from an Excel spreadsheet. You can only get so much from a camera. I want to be on the ground. I want to, uh, I want to see how the employees are working, not only uh, themselves, but with each other. Because teamwork is so important in this business. I want to make sure that they're playing nice with each other. I want to talk to customers. I want to say, why are, you, why are you in today? And I usually get one of three answers. Either one Someone told me about how great this is. I wanted to try it myself. Referral, the best the best sales uh, you can have. Two, I was driving by and there's always lines out the door and I wanted to stop and see why is everybody at this restaurant? Can't understate that. And the third thing, and we found this recently, is the tremendous amount of uh, push and pull that Instagram influencers have. When we have people that come into the store and they order six items and they film it, photograph it, and they put it on their website and they might have 20, 30, 40,000 followers, we literally have the last six videos that we've put up have been 300 to 800,000 views, which is just mind boggling to me. They just go viral. And, uh, and you or I, we could, we could film a video and we could give all this education and we could give, Oh, this is the best biscuit ever. But, if you don't have the followers, you're not going to get that that uh, that next level that these yeah. influencers have that they've built. So the influencers are, I think, is a key component of uh, of uh, really getting the buzz out. But don't underestimate the drive by or the referrals as well. Um, you uh, you asked me um, um, where where do I think I'm going? Yeah, I, I've always used the uh, the answer. I'm going to open up three or thirty. Okay, and people would laugh, and I'm dead serious. Because I'm going to have one now in an up, upscale su- suburb called Winter Park. I'm going to have one in downtown Orlando, which is urban, okay? And I'm going to have one right near the University of Central Florida College with 60,000 kids and administration, staff, and so forth. We'll then compare the data, okay? And we'll say, oh, the suburb does better, or the urban does better, or the college does better. Well, that's going to kind of drive my next locations, um, if they're all off the charts, which we hope, then uh, my, my job is easy because then that means uh, that the, the model has worked in different formats and we'll just keep opening them up based on the criteria that we, we have aligned for, uh, for location selection. I can tell you already, already that 
where our goals are much higher than three restaurants. Yeah. What, what, with your prior experience, you know, building your other business, what's, what's carried over to rise and, and what was like, what were the big learning curves going into a brand new industry? Um, the, the product is different. The, um, the business model is the same. And what I mean by that for me, and the reason I'm doing it the way I'm doing it is I'm clustering these restaurants five miles apart. Now I've had locations, site selection from brokers who sent me locations all over the city of Orlando. And some of them are really, really good. And I just said, no, I'm going to pass because it doesn't fit our business model. And what I mean by that is I want them staggered five miles apart from each other. Because like my other business, you want to amateurize your marketing. You want to amateurize your personnel. You want to amateurize your, uh, let's say you're at a chicken in one restaurant. Uh, you have a, have a run on chicken and your food delivery is coming in a day or two. What do you do? You grab chicken from the other restaurant. Mm -hmm. If your manager calls out they're sick in restaurant two, you can get assistant manager in restaurant one or three to cover that day. If you're marketing an influencer or a direct mail or a radio spot or a billboard, you can amateurize it among the, the many restaurants. So these are these are very key. They're very key. Um, you don't want to be on an island. The other thing is the uh, reporting. Your reporting systems, you're going to be able to see that. I'll give you an example. Winter Park is five miles from downtown Orlando. Um, the, the people who live in Winter Park work in downtown Orlando. So now we're going to get the, let's say, the person who on the weekend goes to our Winter Park store Monday through Friday is near our downtown Orlando store. Already have that uh, that built-in customer base. Um, a lot of the people who live in Winter Park or work in downtown have uh, either have graduated from UCF or have kids that are going to UCF college. So there's another synergy there as well. So I think that that um, is an important point. Um, when somebody's trying to scale, they got to make sure that there's a scalable model in place. Another thing I didn't mention at the beginning is we're a cashless business. Um, it's so undervalued how important that is for management to be able to open a restaurant, run the restaurant, and have everything automated that it automatically goes into your account. You don't have to worry about theft. You don't have to worry about uh, starting the uh, money at the beginning of the day, going to the bank. The the uh, the cashless part of this business is so key and uh, it, it just allows more automation and also with our third party and our catering and so forth. All of the technology we use is uh, so important and it all integrates together. Great business model. Love it. How, how did you find your first GM manager? Was that, you know, because that was, you know. You've never probably interviewed managers before, and yeah. I'm sure there were some questions you're, you you probably done 20 years ago. Never thought I'd be sitting down talking to somebody asking about food costs, so yeah. or or how they manage them. So how did you find that first person? Well, um, I'll give you the good and the ugly. Um, we we actually did hire some managers at the beginning that didn't work out. Okay, mm -hmm. and now we've hired some managers since then that have. Um, I. In a practical way, what I did is I uh, found that Indeed, as a as a as a platform, um, gave me the most bang for my buck. Um, you put it on, and I got forty seven inter uh, forty seven applications in the first hour um, when I put it on. Um, what I've learned is that with this technology of uh, um, of you know Zoom and and uh, and FaceTime and so forth. I find that the uh, the first interview should be on Zoom. It should be on FaceTime. That way you can really give 30 minutes and uh, you can actually talk about their resume and you can talk about and you can have some questions. You can interact. You know what you're getting because you're seeing them and how they speak and uh, they could go through the uh, resume and so forth. Also, they show up. I found that at the beginning, when we're doing in-person interviews, more than 50% of people never show. So yeah. now when you do it on Zoom, you have almost 100% uh, uh, interview rate. At that point, it, let's say you had 50 interviews, you'll say, okay, I'll bring 10 back to the restaurant. And then you bring 10 and then you go in-person because at the end of the day, in-person is still important. And of those 10, maybe you'll hire four and it works great. And all 10 of those will almost always show why? Because you built up a relationship uh, in, on your Zoom call. And that's kind of key. So I feel like that uh, that was a good model for us. That worked real well. 
Um, but um, the, the last part of it you, you mentioned is I, I've struggled with getting good people with food experience and then trying to make them a good manager versus someone who might be a good manager and I teach them about food. And I think with this business model, you really could do number two. I'm looking for, yeah. I'm looking for happy people. I'm looking for trainable people. I'm looking for people that, that are team oriented. I'm looking for people that have been in, in business and uh, in service industries and so forth. They don't know how to cook chicken. We'll teach them how to cook. So that's, that's what I found. I found that you can, you can get people with experience in the food industry. That's okay. Um, you got to get people who are also uh, good at customer service. Hopefully you get both. But if you give me a choice of one or the other, I'll take the person who has the customer service experience. We'll teach them. We'll teach them the job. Well, the nice part about Rise is, you know, what time you're, you're going to be able to get out pretty much every day to, you know, what, two, th three at the very latest. You look at folks that are looking for have kids or just don't want to work nights anymore, which because food is predominantly you're going to have some night shifts and makes makes finding some good people, you know, as I talk to other franchisees with Rise, just easier because a lot of those folks that are, are, are quality, just they're tight. You know, it's food's a grind. There's no yeah. way around. And uh Rise, although, yeah, there's a, I mean, you're, you're living it. There's some shifts that are, I'm sure, Sundays, Saturdays, where it is, we are, we are slanging biscuits for six hours straight, and, uh, but you're out the door at 30, and there's, there's something to be said for that. Um, now, as you're, as you're growing, has, how, how are you looking at, now that number two is opening and the number three sign is, are you looking at, you know, thinking about how's this team going to look down the road? Sure. And, and about that, have you got, are you thinking that far ahead or is it, I need to get number two open before we start really thinking that far down the road? Well, I'm, I'm kind of looking at it now because we have two and we have three coming on board. So we're going to have a model that works pretty well in most businesses. You'll have a, you'll have a manager, you'll have an assistant manager, you'll have a regional manager. So I'm, I'm blessed that my uh, son-in-law will be the regional manager and he'll be popping in all three stores I'll obviously be in the background, back office, uh, and accounting and marketing and uh, and watching the cameras and so forth, leadership as well, um, which is important. I mean, my my job was to make Luke, my son-in-law, a better manager. Okay, and uh, and when I first uh, when he first got in there, I smiled and said, "I need a year. I need a year with you." And uh, we're on nine months now, and I can tell you that. Um, it takes it takes a year for someone to really grow in the job. Um, it's not just cooking uh, cooking biscuits and chicken. It's it's dealing with people. It's dealing with customers. It's uh, it's making people uh, accountable and so forth. Um, that that has worked great. But I think the regional manager is the is the way to go. You'll have three managers report to a regional manager, and you'll have your monthly you know your weekly meetings and so forth. You could scale that to five. Five managers could probably report to one regional manager. When you get past that, you'll you'll need a second regional manager. You know, you never want to go past like three to five stores of reporting to uh, one person. Other reason is that the regional manager has to uh, fill in when uh, managers have days off, when they call in sick, when they're on vacation, or it might just be that they're having a, a crazy day and they're there to. Uh, lend a hand, lend an extra uh, hand on that get on that day. So yeah. it's important that you don't scale too far past uh, what the regional manager comfortably can, uh, can do as well. Now you hit it on the head earlier. You mentioned, you know, we can, you, you can train people how to cook chicken, how to make biscuits. Those are all, those are all very trainable things. It's the, the emotional intelligence, the knowing how to drive people and, and hold them accountable, but also in a way that they don't want to walk out the door when you do it. You know, they want to stay. They, th they feel like they're building something with you, too. Um, you know, those those are those things that, that a lot of people lose when they hire, you know, because they look at somebody's just strictly their background versus what did they do when they were there versus, you know, I worked at these these maybe high profile spots. It's really identifying folks that are going to connect and and because it's just because you make the best biscuits or make the best chicken or do it the fastest doesn't mean you're the best leader. And there's are they're very different things. Um, you know, you see it all the time where people get moved their way up in the restaurant world because they, you know, they made the drinks the fastest. Well, it doesn't mean that that translates over to, to leading a group of people. Uh, you know, as, as, as you, as you sort of, I don't, I don't know how often you look back at the past nine months and, 
and, and sort of if it's romantic when you look back or if it's, oh, man, what a grind. But, you know, when you when you sit back and, you know, on a Friday and you're thinking about what you're what you're what you're building, like what 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 comes to mind right away? If you were to sit and, you know, if you and I were sitting outside by your boat and having a whiskey, and, well, you know, what would you think? You know, if I said, tell me about the last nine months, what would what would come to your mind? It would be bourbon, first of all. Um, <laughs> the uh, the I, my old job, my old job, I would get in eight o'clock. OK, sometimes you get in earlier. All right. You'll you'll go to uh, five thirty six. You come home, you commute. You uh, eat dinner. You're back on your laptop. On the weekends, you're doing trade shows. This schedule for me is a half a day. Seven to two feels like a half a day to me. I love the intensity of how how hard we go, and I love that it ends at two. It's kind of it's kind of uh, you, you asked about the grind. The grind is uh, 10, 10 30 a.m. on a on a Sunday, and people are just lines out the door, and everybody wants their food right away, and and uh, it's a good problem to have. Trust me. Mm-hmm. The the romantic part of it is I love the restaurant when it closes because at two o'clock <laughs> everyone's gone, and you kind of as you're cleaning up, and you're looking around at your people, and you're looking at how much food we produce today, and you and you're uh, you're you're shutting down the uh, the grills and the, you're you're cleaning and you're restocking and uh, and you're ready to shut the music off and the lights. There's kind of a romantic part of that where you go, this is this is good. This is good. We're uh, we're uh, we're living our best life right now, and I kind of feel that way. Kind of feel that there's a and I and I and I mentioned that at the beginning. Being on my boat was great. Every day after that felt a little less fun. Okay, and to me, my personality: the harder I work, the more fun I have. Okay, and the more fun I have, the more I want to work. So I just can't go seven days a week playing golf. I, uh, I need to, I need to have something that I'm striving for as well. And I don't want to be full time anymore either. So any, uh, business owner that's listening to this, you could definitely have a very successful, uh, part-time, uh, quote, quote unquote, part-time, uh, job here. I don't think it's ever part-time because your mind's always on it when you're open, but, um, physical labor, you're actually, uh, managing this from your, uh, your office, you don't want to be you want to be working on your business. You don't want to be working in your in your business. And like I said, I go there on Sundays, but um, you got to you want your managers, your system managers and your uh, and your and your line uh, staff to uh, to do the work. But you want to make sure that you're hiring the right right people, give them the right tools and uh, and uh, lead them, uh, lead them to success. Um, you mentioned one thing. Um, um, the one thing that we uh we, we love is um, after we hire them, we, we say to them, um, do you have any side hustles? Do you have a second job? Um, try to support our employees all we can, not only in the job, but also outside the job, because they're taking this job for a reason. They, they, mm-hmm. they want to make money. OK, some are very passionate about food. Some it's just here for a paycheck, but that's OK. But listen, you get off a tooth. You could get another job. Let's, you know, hustle. You're, you're a young guy, young guy, you're a young girl. Go, go hustle. Go, go get another job. You have a side hustle. Oh, I do web design on the side. I do uh, other things on the side. Do it. You got plenty of time when you get out of here to not only have a job to pay the bills, but also work on something that you're, is uh, your, uh, your second job, your career, your side hustle and so forth. And the last thing is obviously uh, hobbies and what is your passion? What is your, you know, your friend group, your family? What, what's important to you? You know, you support the, uh, your personnel as family as well. So anything that they, uh, they do, you want to support them as well. So that's important. I mean, that whole cliche of your, uh, your group is your family is not a cliche at all. It's very important. Oh, I, I, I couldn't agree more, especially in the restaurant because you're side by side. And you mentioned, you know, I, like I got a little nostalgic when you were mentioning, you know, the end of a shift closing down it's yeah. uh there's a sense of accomplishment after a good shift especially if it was really busy cuz everybody's it takes everybody yeah you know and everybody's everybody's leaning on everybody to you know to 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 get through that shift together and it's uh there's there's like a, it's almost euphoric when you get done some some days where it's like man how many biscuits did we make how many sandwiches right. we we took care of that many people and you go geez wow you know it's like you have those days and they go well and you have the, some of those that, that go sideways. That's a reality and you learn yeah. from it. But, 
but yeah, there's there's no other industry like the, the food industry. It just uh, it's it's addicting. I'll tell you that. And I um, I love the I love the pace, and I love that the hours go so quick. I mean, mm-hmm. again, I'm only there once a week, so I can't talk for my full time employees. But I get there in the morning, you blink, it's two o'clock, and yeah. it's because you're staying busy. And uh, and I I mean, there's there's a lot of jobs I've done that are very uh, physical. There's a lot of jobs I've done that are very uh, cerebral. Um, I prefer cerebral with, with some physical more than the other way around. I just could use, utilize my talents better that way. But, um, it's nice once in a while to, uh, to, um, roll up your sleeves and and do some manual labor. It clears out your head and it, uh, it feels good. It feels good to to do that when you're working at a desk all day. And and before I let you go, uh, I'll give you, I want to give you a chance to be the rise ambassador and anybody that's, is we're, as we share this through our social channels, anybody's sort of thinking, "Hey, I'm looking for food," or "I've heard about this. I'm curious." What would you What would you say? Just overall, your experience and and and, and obviously you're growing, but just sort of what what do you have to say about Rise and and how things are going? Well, I I would say that if you have the why, if you answered the why of um, why did you look at Rise franchise? If it's piqued your interest, interest at all, I would definitely go on the uh, the discovery day, and um, and that you'll get a lot of information. You'll be able to see the restaurants. You'll meet the uh, meet the owners. You'll uh, you'll taste the food, and you'll get the uh, the business plan. You'll get the business plan of uh, approximate uh, cost of what it is to start one. What is the actual um, um, average cash flow of a business, and you'll get uh, very detailed information. Um, and then you can make your decision. I could tell you that there's a lot of territories that have been taken and a lot of them are still available. Still, I think you're getting in the game of a rise at the perfect time. It's a young franchise, but it's starting to really take off now. So, um, this is the perfect time because all the kinks have been worked out. The menus, the, um, definitely all the things that need to, uh, for growth are in place. And yes. now is the time where, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs like myself, I know there's been other entrepreneurs around the country who weren't even in the food industry and they've all mm-hmm. seen the same thing I have. So um, I don't know if that's typical. You live in that world more than me, but I would say that um, Rise is perfectly aligned for, uh, for, a, for a, an investment, for a, for a businessman that wants to use this uh, as a vehicle for, uh, for growing um, within their, you know, their net worth and their and uh, investment and so forth. So it's definitely would be something to look at, but always answer the why of why a restaurant versus buy some real estate or just sit home and swing a golf club and buy some <laughs> stocks. For me, it was a perfect alignment. Yeah, I, I would I would echo what you're saying. Tons of momentum on the brand. Um, good group like a franchisees like yourself, you know, f- food and non-food background that are coming in and really following the system and that their, their systems are dialed. You know, uh, you mentioned Ken and Brian, they're, they're, they're operators at heart and, uh, and they're, 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 the food quality needs to be there, but the systems need to match that quality too. And they, they, they check both boxes. So yeah, I, I pound the table for, for rise. I think, uh, I think the, the best days are still to come with it. I think it's like I said, a lot of, a lot of growth coming. Uh, and I don't think there's really anything else like it in the space. Like, uh, it's, uh, it feels, it lives in its own world right now, sort of where this quality breakfast in a fast casual qsr setting that nobody else does it like rise i would agree i would second that um there's a lot of uh, upscale breakfast places but you're there two hours and the check average check is very high mm-hmm. and then you have the uh the fast food uh fast food model which is um not um a scratch kitchen that we we propose i like our model i like the uh the um you order the food, you customize it, and then you uh, make it and everything's hot and everything is customized. I love the technology of you can add or take away anything on any product we have. It's kind of the uh, the old model. I, I always love when I'm talking to someone at a table, I, I said, uh, do you love your uh, biscuit sandwich? And they say, yeah. I go, of course you did. You made it. You, uh, you're the <laughs> one who uh, said, give me an extra egg, give me some extra cheese, throw some extra bacon on there. And when you get that sandwich, guess what? It's exactly what you wanted. So that's a that's a little hidden value that most people forget is um, the the uh, the model is individualized, high speed. So it's like almost a it's a, it's, a, it's almost a, 
a scratch kitchen fast food customized menu. And um, you mentioned Southern Biscuits with the QSR uh, model. I don't, I don't know anyone else is doing what we're doing right now. Yeah, I would agree more. Um, hey, well, Don, I know it taking up. I know you're busy, taking a lot of your time. I appreciate, pre- honestly, I appreciate a ton. Um, it's always good anytime we're able to connect. Uh, you know, I'm excited about. I didn't know you signed the third lease, so ha- congratulations on that. That's awesome. And uh, I, I got, I got to get to Orlando. I got some friends that live there. I know I sent them to Winter Park, but I need to go there and experience it myself. Mickey, Minnie, and Rise, come on, you can, you can visit us. <laughs> All right, all right. I'll, 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 my wife loves Disney, so we'll we'll make instead of going to California, we'll come to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Don. Thanks again. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Take care. Bye.